Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's Echo Stretch. In this video, we're going to create an easy guide uh, how to back up your game and be able to play it without having the disc inserted. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, I already went ahead with the jailbreak. And as for the game, we're going to be using Minecraft. It is a small game, so it should be pretty quick here. Uh, as you can see, I am on version 1.00. So we'll go ahead and back out of there. We're going to go ahead and get an update for it. So we'll use patch installer. I will leave a link in the description. You can go ahead and download that package and just go ahead and install it through your goal 10 options. So we'll go ahead and open it up. Give it a few moments here to load. And then when prompt, you can go ahead and just hit X. And then once we're loaded in, you can see the games listed. We're going to go down to Minecraft, and a quick way to get to the bottom of the list, if uh, there is a lot, just go ahead and press up on the D-pad, and it will bring you to the latest version. And as you can see, 2.36 has a red icon, um, so it's not going to work for 9.00. The latest version that we can use is the 2.35. So we'll go ahead and hit X on that, and then go ahead with Continue Installation and it should add it to the downloads. Go ahead and hit OK. And then once that's done, we are done with that patch installer. So we can go ahead and close out of that. And if we go up to our notifications and jump in there, you can see that it is downloading and it is going pretty quick. So while that's downloading, we can just go ahead and back out of there. We're going to need uh, our bin loader in order for us to be able to launch the game dumper. So we'll go ahead and enable our bin loader. And at this time you can go ahead and plug in your hard drive or your USB, whichever you're going to use to back up the game. I'm going to use my external drive, so I'll just go ahead and plug that in. Okay guys, so we're just about done there. It is installing. I went ahead and skipped ahead. Go ahead and back out of there. And if we go ahead and click on Minecraft with the options, and then go information, you can see that we're on 2.35. So we're going to go ahead and launch the game. And it doesn't matter where we are in the game as long as we do have it open. Um, it may start downloading another update. You can just go ahead and just hit your option button, go into your notification, and you can go ahead and just cancel and delete that update. As for the system version, I do have the payload uh, disable updates in, so it doesn't actually download, it just gets stopped right away. But you can cancel and delete that as well. So now we have the game open, we'll go ahead and open up our browser. Okay, and once we do get it loaded up, we'll go ahead with App Dumper. Now, depending on your host, um, whichever host you're using, it could be just called Dumper or Game Dumper. Um, but generally, it's the same way. You go ahead and launch your, your bin loader, check it, and then go ahead and launch the dumper. Okay, so payload received. And run an App Dumper. Now, depending on the game, um, it may take it a little bit of time. This is Minecraft. It shouldn't take too long at all. Um, and as for the update, the update isn't very big either. But depending on which game you're backing up, it may take some time. So just give it time. And uh, the best thing to do is just if you have a light on your external drive or your USB, once it stops blinking, then you know it's done. But I'm going to go ahead and just skip ahead. No, it's Okay, and quitting. So everything is successful now. If you go ahead and take a look at your hard drive or your flash drive, the light should be stopped blinking. Okay, so before we jump over to the computer, we'll go ahead and hit our PlayStation button. We'll go over to our settings, and we're just going to go ahead and enable our FTP because we'll need to jump over to get our trophy files. Um, just take note of the IP address and the port, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. Okay, so now that we're over to the computer, I do have my drive plugged in. If you do see the complete file here, that indicates that everything was successful. But let's go ahead and just jump into the trophies. Um, you can go ahead and use a hex editor. I prefer just to use a notepad. It's a lot easier just to show it. Uh, if we go into the app folder and into the sys and then to our trophy, 
you can see that the trophy file itself comes up with the PNG image names. Um, that just indicates that the trophy file is decrypted. Now, if we do this over on the the uh, patch side, go into the patch, and it just so happens Minecraft has two trophy files, so we'll have to get both of them. But if we go ahead and just drag any one of them over, uh, give it a few moments to load, you can see that we don't see the PNG file. So we need to get the the uh, decrypted trophy files but it's not very hard to do we can do it very easily if we just back up one folder and we go ahead and just copy over this np bind and just drag it over um, it does list our two folders that we need to find it in and like i said you could use a hex editor hex editor will work exactly the same i just find notepad is a lot easier just to drag it over so we're going to go ahead and open up our flash fxp you can use any FTP program you wish, but uh, that's the one I'm going to go with. Go ahead and just quick connect. And we'll go ahead and type in our IP address, which is 10, oh, 10 .0 and it's port 2121. Go ahead and hit connect. And we'll just change this here folder here to our drive which is the G drive and we can go straight into our patch folder and into our sys and our trophy so these are the two that we want to replace so we'll go into user trophy conf and then we're just looking for those two folders names so the first one is 5706 which is right here we can go ahead and just drag that over and just make sure that you don't get them mixed up so this one's going to be the 001 you can see by the size of them so we can go ahead and just rename this and just copy the name because we want to replace it with the same name and then we can go ahead and just delete it delete are you sure yes and then we'll just rename the file that we just transferred over and paste Okay, so we'll go on to our second one. And our second one is 200567, which is the very last one right here. Go ahead and transfer that over. And you can see the size, the size is the same. So go ahead and just transfer the selected file. And we'll do the same. We'll just go ahead and rename this one, copy the full name, and then go ahead and delete it and then rename the trophy file perfect now that's done we can go ahead and close out of our FTP program as we won't need it anymore we can go into the trophy file and I will show you that they are decrypted now as you can see the PNG images do come up do it for the second one as well and they do come up there's not many trophies in this one um, but uh, you can see by the size of it but once that's done, we can go ahead and close out of there as we have that part done. Go ahead and just back up to our root. And we're going to go ahead and open up our fake package tool folder. Now they did something really nice here. Um, you go ahead and open up your Gen 2. And we can go ahead and select the app folder. So we're going to our G and select it and hit OK. Now if we hit generate, it should generate it with no issues. Um, one thing I want to point out now, they did fix it so it does grab the keystone. Uh, if you look right here, the keystone file is being grabbed now so we no longer have to edit the GP4 file and add that keystone file in. So we'll go ahead and hit save and we'll just save it to the same location. That is fine. We see it there. Go ahead and close out of there. They created a one for a patch too. Now I don't know if it makes a difference. You can stick with the app and do both. Um, I think the only difference is the app now grabs the keystone. So, but you can go ahead and just go ahead and open up the patch. And we'll go ahead and select our folder. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then generate. Now this one will take a little bit of time. There is a lot of files in the update, but uh, I'll just go ahead and skip ahead.
Okay, so it did finish. We can go ahead and hit save. And just save it to the root of the drive. Go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, we do have the app and the patch here. So we can go ahead and close out of there. Okay, so if we go ahead and open up Orbis's gen box, you can see that I do I may not have enough space on the C drive. Um, so we go ahead and hit close there. It doesn't give you an option inside the program, so you have to actually close it out and go ahead and open up this temp folder patcher. And from here, we can go ahead and choose. Um, I'm just going to use a simple folder. I'll just create one over here, and we'll just call it temp. And if we go into the folder, and just go ahead and select the location up here. And then we'll just choose option number three for custom location. And then we'll go ahead and paste in our location, and then hit enter. And then it should open up the program for you, and it should create the folder here. So we can go ahead and back up out of here. We'll go ahead and go File, Open. Go ahead and choose our app. And then we'll go ahead and hit Build. Go ahead here and select Open Location. And Save. And then we can go ahead and hit Build. Should start building. Don't worry about the errors that may come up, or the warnings, I should say. Um, you're just basically looking for actual errors. They're the only things to be concerned about. Should go pretty quick, as Minecraft is a small game. And there we go. It's taken off now. And 100%. So we go ahead and hit close. And then we'll do the same for the patch. Go ahead and open it. And select it. Now the patch does require the actual game. Um, you might come into a predicament. Sometimes the, the game brings you up to 1.02. Um, it might require you just to rename it. So we'll go ahead and just hit build. And then we'll go ahead and select it. And hit save. And build. Okay, so you can see that we do have errors. It cannot find the file. It's just because it's looking for Minecraft 1. So if we go ahead and just rename this, take away that 2, and put a 0, we should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and just close that now, and then we'll go ahead and build. And select our same path, and save, and build. And as you can see, it is going. Now the update is going to take a little bit, so I'll let it go, and I will skip ahead. Okay, guys, so we did finish. It did finish with uh, warnings. We're not too worried about the warnings. They're fine. As long as we don't get any errors, we have our file here, our update, as well as our main game. So we can go ahead and unplug that and go over to our PlayStation, and we'll get it installed. Okay, so now that we're over to our PlayStation, we can go ahead and back out of there. Go ahead and just select Minecraft, and we can go ahead and delete it as we won't need it anymore. Okay, and then we'll go back into our goal 10 options. Go into package, installer, just make sure your hard drive is plugged in. And I only have two here, so I can go with install all. Give it a few moments, it shouldn't take too long as they are pretty small. Okay, and now we're on to the update. Okay, just about halfway. Okay, about 75% now. And there we go, 100%. Okay, well, it's, there we go. Okay, so now that we're done, we can go ahead and back out of there. Go over to Minecraft. You can see that we don't have the disk icon anymore. Go ahead and go to Options, Information, and you can see that we are on 2.35. Let's go ahead and open it up just to confirm everything is working. Give it a few moments just to load in here. Okay, 40%, 75%, 80. And 
And we can go ahead and hit play. And we'll play offline. Oh, I might have, uh, let's go ahead and back out of there. But yeah, guys, that's basically it for the video. I just wanted to jump on, show you how you do that there. It's a lot easier doing it that way now that it recognizes the keystone file. You don't have to go ahead and put in any commands. Uh, but I'm going to leave the video at that. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.